The McLaren 720S introduces the second generation of the McLaren Super Series. It replaces the 650S and shows off the new design language for McLaren's future cars. The car is many things, but above all, it is a masterpiece. The exterior of the 720S was designed by Robert Melville, who has since replaced Frank Stevenson, the famed automotive designer. Robert Melville and the other designers of the car took inspiration from the Great White Shark. The rippling lines on the car mimic the powerful muscles of this sea predator, and the curved metal in front is reminiscent of a fanged mouth. The 720S is offered in 20 different colors, seven of which are new. This model is painted in classic McLaren orange and has 10-spoke super lightweight rims. The fantastic dihedral doors open up to reveal a simple interior design. With McLaren's new Mono Cage 2 chassis, the interior is supposedly really a lot bigger than previous McLarens and a lot more luxurious. A lot more luxurious than McLaren's past models still isn't very luxurious, but it's a pretty good car. Um, everything is kind of driver focused. The interior on this 720S features materials such as Alcantara and leather and an optional MSO carbon fiber steering wheel. Probably the most techy thing in the 720S is the foldable instrument cluster. It can move up and down to help reduce distraction. The 720S has been designed not only to look good, but also to perform better aerodynamically than the 650S did. The car as a whole produces 50% more downforce than the 650S did, uh, and that's aided actually by the full width rear spoiler, which produces 30% more than the 650S spoiler did. In addition to improved downforce, the 720S also has superior cooling, thanks to several clever tricks. The hood of the car has been designed to direct air into a channel that's located in both the doors, and that channel sends the air around the back of the car and into two radiators in front of the rear wheels. The headlights on the 720S are very different from previous McLaren design there's a hole and it actually goes back to a vent and into a radiator so it, it helps cool the car but it doesn't really look very good in my opinion. The 720S's twin turbo V8 is derived from the one in the 650S but 41% of the parts are new. It produces 710 horsepower and 568 pound-feet of torque. The twin scroll twin turbos in the 720S have less lag than in the 650S with peak torque at 5,500 RPM, 3,000 before the 8,500 RPM rev limiter. Comparatively, the 650S made its peak torque of 500 pound-feet at 6,000 RPM. Power in the 720S is sent to the rear wheels through a dual-clutch 7-speed automatic transmission. The engine is showcased in the rear behind a thin screen with red ambient lighting. The 720S uses McLaren's Monocage 2 chassis, a one-piece carbon fiber tub that includes the roof, extends into the engine bay, and has wider door entrances. It's derived from the chassis found in the famed McLaren P1 and helps keep weight at a low 2,828 pounds dry. The 720S has double wishbone suspension and independently adaptive dampers. It's monitored by the McLaren Proactive Chassis Control 2, which can make adjustments to the suspension when needed. The system includes four accelerometers in the wheel hubs, which monitor tire grip and can vary the electronic stability control for a mode McLaren calls variable drift control. The car goes from 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds and has a top speed of 212 miles per hour. It actually does the quarter mile in only 10.3 seconds. The car reaches 124 miles per hour in 7.8 seconds and 186 in 21.4 seconds. However, all this performance does come at a cost. The 720S gets only a combined 18 mpg. To say the success of the 720S is important to the McLaren brand is an understatement. It's a flagship model for the company, and with it are all of McLaren's hopes and dreams as a brand. Fortunately for McLaren, the car has already proven its worth. It's sold out for the year, with 1,500 orders taken. It's a work of art in an automotive technical masterpiece.